two things that I really, really like. One is my NAS. I absolutely love my NAS. And I love home labs where I can go and tinker, I can build stuff and I can learn more about technology. You can actually get a NAS and make it into a home lab. You don't need to go and invest all this cash in buying servers to make your own home lab. You can do it directly on your NAS. I've got a Synology NAS. I'm gonna be doing this on a Synology NAS using some software that essentially makes my Synology NAS into a server. I can actually build virtual servers directly on my NAS and essentially convert it into a home lab. Brilliant. Here is what I think is a tech fail, but it may be a tech success story later on. Google Glass. What was Google Glass? Google Glass were like a pair of sunglasses. You would just throw them on your face and it would like display information directly into your pair of glasses. Like I'm sure you've seen this sort of thing in like sci-fi movies. A lot of sci-fi movies have sort of used this sort of concept. Walk around, look at stuff, and it would sort of tell you the information about that, relevant things, your calendar. Amazing, right? Unfortunately, Google did face a number of challenges and ultimately Google Glass failed to gain widespread adoption. Now there could have been various factors, but one thing was that it was gonna cost a lot of money. So most people wouldn't even be able to afford to buy the thing. I had like a camera. People were like a bit weirded out by that. I mean, you're just gonna be walking around with glasses, with like a little embedded camera everywhere you go. I mean, think about the creepo who just pulls out his phone and takes photos of people. Imagine that all the time, but you're not really being able to know when that's happening because they're just glasses. A lot of people found that it was a little bit limited. He couldn't actually do a lot more than some of these basic, basic things. And then really a couple of years later, Google said, no, nah, that's it. We're going to drop this thing. But there's been rumors really ever since. But who knows what the future may hold for Google Glass or something similar. So in a nutshell, what is a home lab? Well, a home lab is a space where you can go and build stuff in your own space for your own learning. Think about it like a scientific lab, right? You've got people in a science laboratory, they're doing stuff, they're building things, they're maybe testing out viruses, these sort of things, who knows? But then they learn from these mistakes, hopefully, and then they get better. And that's sort of a little bit about what a home lab is like. A home lab, you go in and build in your own environment, you're building your own servers, you're building your own stuff for the purposes of learning. You're gonna build servers, maybe building like domain controllers, web servers, proxies, firewalls. Yes, you could get something like a full-fledged home lab environment. Physical switches, I've got routers, I've got firewalls, I've got all of my little PCs, I've got full servers. But what if I could do this directly on my NAS? Here I'm on my Synology NAS. You do this on your NAS, but I've got a package center where I can just download an application and I'm gonna look for an application that is all about building virtual machines. And of course, this lets me build a whole bunch of VMs directly on my NAS and essentially have my home lab running from my NAS. So I can just go ahead and search for it or check in the package center area right here and then just install it and then wait. You'll then need to go and configure it depending on what sort of setup you've got on your NAS, what volume, what storage pool, what RAID, whatever else you've got on that NAS, you wanna get that set up accordingly. Now, of course, the big thing about this is that you're gonna to need to have yourself a bunch of ISOs, essentially installation media for all of the different VMs that you're gonna be building. So I've got CentOS, which is the version of Linux. I can download Ubuntu desktop or server, which of course is Linux as well. And I can also go and grab myself a trial version of Windows Server 2022 or any version of Windows Server for that matter. You of course just go into your Google machine, you go and download those ISOs. And then those ISOs, you can then go and add them into your VMs that you are gonna be building. Opening up the software, you may need to do some initial configuration to make sure that everything works, that you've got your virtual switches, your networking all configured well, and then you're gonna go and select the volume that you wanna use where you're gonna actually be storing all of these VMs, essentially your home lab servers. Then we'll go and create our first VM. You're gonna ask for the flavor, Windows or Linux. Let's go ahead and build a Windows one very, very quickly. This is where I'm gonna store it. And how many CPUs, how much RAM do you wanna give it? And what is the name of this server? And allocate some specific resources to it. Now, keeping in mind, of course, that this is going to be using the resources of your NAS. So when this VM is running, 
your NAS resources are going to be now shared with this VM. So potentially things may not run as well as you want, but they will work if you've got a NAS that is pretty pumpy and has got sufficient resources. Now in the case of Windows, it's gonna ask me to go and download some agents, essentially like a driver package, so that Windows recognizes the components of your NAS, essentially the drivers for the hardware, which is your NAS hardware. You then go and navigate to the ISOs that we've gone and downloaded. So we're gonna go and get our Windows ISO that we've downloaded and select it right there. Of course, knowing that I've copied these ISOs to my NAS for ease of use. And then we start our VM and then the installation commences. And now the process of installing Windows Server is pretty straightforward. You just follow the prompts, you let it know where you want to install, and of course, this is gonna be installing it in a virtual environment. So you go and format that disk, you wait a bit of time, and then you'll have Windows Server fully running and connected to your network via your NAS. And then you go and configure it accordingly. And then you can do the same thing by creating another VM. This time we're gonna use Linux, and we're gonna go and point it to our Ubuntu Linux ISO and then start the installation of that, and then we go and set it up. So go and build yourself as many VMs as you need. Now, of course, remembering that because this is on your NAS, it may run a little bit slower. So it's sometimes not good to have all your VMs powered on all at once. Now, what VMs could you be building? Here are a few of my favorites to give you some ideas about what service VMs you could actually be building directly on your NAS. You go on a trip somewhere, a vacation, on a holiday, and you've recorded a whole bunch of videos on there. You've got TV shows, you've got maybe some movies. We can centrally manage all of this on a media server, a dedicated machine for managing all of your content. And the great thing is there's applications such as Plex, which I absolutely love. You can set up Plex, you can scan all of your files and download all the cover art of your TV shows and things like that if you really want to. It's really, really cool. And then you can literally go and grab maybe an iPhone, an iPad, another sort of device, an Apple TV. It finds a Plex server out on the network it'll talk to it. So it's really, really cool media server. Do you love gaming? I love gaming. And what you could do is you could build your own gaming server. That way you're not reliant on having to go and source all this stuff directly off the cloud. You could actually have it dedicated in your own space. Something that I love about game servers is you could actually host your own LAN party at home get all your friends together to bring their computers and then you could actually be running the server, the game server directly on a VM. And then it's sourcing that game that's running all of the grunt from your server. You could build your own Minecraft game server. Wouldn't that be brilliant? Wouldn't it be great if you could actually run your own website in your home lab, at least learn about the technology. And yes, you can by building a web server. One of the most popular CMS, essentially a full platform for websites is a program called WordPress. You can install WordPress completely for free. It'll install all the backend stuff like PHP, MySQL, like the database and all of that in the background. And because it is one of the largest web platforms out there, go and play around with WordPress on a web server. So how do computers on a network get their IP address? Like you're plugging in a computer into a network and it automatically just gets a 192.168.0.3 IP address. How does it do that? Well, there's two ways. One is a static IP, somebody physically going in and putting in the IP address. The other way is DHCP. Somebody actually going and setting up a DHCP server and then it's dishing out IP addresses across your network. So go and build yourself your own DHCP server. A few things that you could do here, you could actually go and actually do this on a Windows server as well. Build your own dedicated Windows box, a VM running DHCP. Again, you can also do this on a Linux box. Firewall and a proxy. One that I love is PFSense. Go and check it out. Download it completely for free. And you can set up a proxy and a firewall. And you know what? This is something that is awesome. If, you, if you're wanting to know more about networking, if you want to know more about routes, you want to know about firewall rules, try PFSense. Get it. How about a security server? This is now a server that is managing security. If you've got things such as CCTV, maybe an alarm system, anything like that can actually be centrally managed in a security system. If you wanna get really fancy, you could set it up as what's called a DVR, a digital video recorder. Go and buy yourself a few cameras, stick them around your house, and then centrally manage them on this DVR security server. Get a backup server built. There's lots of technologies out there. You can then learn a little bit about the differences between an incremental backup, a differential backup, a full backup, retention periods, how long you wanna be keeping the data. All that sort of stuff is gonna give you a treasure trove of knowledge when you're managing backups. If you wanna know more about the home life, 
Lab. If you know want to know more about Synology NASs, which is what I did this on, I've got a full length training course on each of those two topics down below in the description. You can go check those out. If you love tech as much as I do, why don't you stay tuned as well for that next video. We continue to talk about all things tech. We'll see you then.